Ah, oh, hey viewers. You know what today's theme of the video is? Long drawn out pointless driving. Oh, yes. I know you've been wanting it, so I'm giving it to you today with Toyminator. Right, so the point of today's mission, or at least the first one, because I'm going to try to get to two today, unlike yesterday. I didn't mean to just do one, but you got to understand, there's a lot to do once you get access to the third island. I digress. It's going to get worse as it comes up, as time goes on, because some of these missions, oh, it's getting into endgame material. That's right, we're finishing it up. It's only going to be a couple more parts, and then we'll be done with GTA 3. I'm dead serious about that too. We're we're finishing it up. It's, uh, I'm trying not to use the term "I digress." It's kind of infuriating a little bit. It's a little frustrating, just a little bit, because I'm so used to saying it whenever I do these parts. And the ironic thing is, I don't use it in real life that much. It's just that when I put on the headset, get the video going, and start talking, it's just oh. Trying to make a point, all of a sudden, get off topic. I digress! So yeah, from this point on, I'm gonna try not to use it so much. I'm gonna try, at least not for this video. Yeah, that's right, I'm not gonna use it again in this video. Let's see how frustrated I get. I digress. <laughs> uh, should, I, should I stop the video? Uh, you know what, screw it. I don't even care. I don't even care. But I'm gonna stick to that. Okay, search and destroy. Yeah, that's right, search and destroy. Um, so we're in a little RC car. It's adorable. They call it a buggy, but it's you can't fool me. It's an RC car. And so you were just driving the RC car, and we're just going. We're we're driving. We're cruising around looking for these little armored cars, aka secure cars, because that's what they are. So it. Since our since secure cars are a little more rare to run into because they don't really spawn that much, you're pretty much guaranteed to find them right off the bat. Plus, they're located in the mini map by little brown dots. And in addition, they um they have little arrows overhead, so you know you, you can't miss them. You'd have to be an idiot to miss them. Plus, there's no time limit, so that's pretty cool. They say there's a limit, but really, I think it's just don't leave the island, and the car won't explode. And and that's really all there is to the mission. I know it's, it's fantastic, it's boring. I need to talk about something else. Uh, zombies. That's right. I'm gonna talk about zombies, cause uh, zombies seem to be in everything nowadays, and I, I might as well get my two cents. So. I think I talked about it once, a while back, but I figured out how to survive the zombie apocalypse. You know what that is? The fetal position. That's right. It's not about guns or or hiding out and just waiting out until the zombies die off or re-die or whatever it is that zombies do to pretty much be inactive. They uh they got you gotta use the fetal position. See they go towards you if, like, you pose a challenge because they have to work for their meal. But if you make it so you're just pathetic and worthless, they ain't gonna bother with your ass because you're not worth it. So the field position is obviously the ultimate position. I had a dream about this, viewers. I'm not making this up. It's the fetal position. They'll just scoff at you and just be like, oh, what a pathetic loser. Let's just go. He's not worth it. Yeah, no, that, that's how zombies think, viewers. I know, everyone says they're mindless beings, but no, it's it's the fetal position and making yourself look as pathetic as possible. That's how you survive. Some people say it's cowardice, but I say it's everything you can do to survive the next day. And you think I'm strange and weird, but it's, believe you and me, I'm going to be laughing when I'm the last person alive. Because I use the fetal position to my advantage. And that, that's honestly how you survive the zombie apocalypse. You gotta think outside the box. You gotta be as pathetic as possible. Because if you're more pathetic, 
They ain't gonna mess with your ass. They ain't gonna mess with it. In addition to that, I got a book. I got a book for Christmas. Actually, um, it, you ever heard of Surviving the Zombie Outbreak, the official zombie survival field manual? I got that for Christmas. I, I, I think my grandma got it for me, which is kind of cool, you know. Thank you, Grandma. I, I like being able to survive the zombie apocalypse. And it actually gives you a little bit of everything, believe it or not. It even tells you how to, like, like go about other survivors with, like, bartering and, and ethics, which is something you don't really think about too much, because it's kind of like, okay, there's a zombie outbreak, you're going to look out for one person, you're going to look out for yourself, because that's the only person really worth surviving the zombie apocalypse, in your opinion, or at least I would think, it's either yourself or a loved one, and that, that's what I'm thinking, so, you know, Anything else is irrelevant. Some effort is white, my wheels to blow. If I lose those wheels, my rep on the street will be dead. Pick up my car and take it over to the garage on St. Mark's, all right, yo? Let them defuse that. Let them take care of that bomb. The clock's ticking and the wiring is messed up. One pothole too many and that thing could blow. Now move it. Oh, well, some effort. If it's some effort, I guess we gotta do it. Uh, I'm quoting D-Ice, by the way. That's the term he likes to use to describe the jackass that rigged his vehicle with a bomb. Some effa. That, that's just ridiculous. You know, I can't use that term and make it sound fly. I, I don't think anyone really can. In fact, if someone is willing to prove how cool, you can just say some effa. I don't even know if that was a real term back in the day, but... God help me, that, that is just ridiculous. I try to use that, you know what happens? I get a lot of weird looks. I get a lot of people that's just like, you are a jackass and an idiot. Kill them. Just, just shut up. You're not fly, you're not too cool for school, you're not a fool. And to be honest, I, I guess I'm not a fool, but I like to think I at least got some street cred, you know, back in the day. I, I went around with my rap music, I like to listen to some Luda, you know, just go around being like, yeah, I'm too cool for school. To which people just thought I was an idiot, but, you know, enough of my problems. I, I tried to fit in. I was trying to hang out with street kids, you know, just be like, yo, dog, what's up? Give them a little fist pound, you know, be like, yo, what's up, my, what's up, my dog? Dog. Those days are long over. <laughs> oh, man. Nowadays, it's just kind of like I listen to more rock. I don't... It's, I like rock. I like... Actually, I like some psychedelic. I've been listening to a lot of Pink Floyd. I got The Wall for Christmas. I really like The Wall. It's a good track. I get kind of emotional whenever I listen to the second CD, because it comes with two CDs. Uh I think, I think the second CD is also the more emotional, like, songs, and, and where things really start hitting, where shit hits the fan and everything just starts really, like, getting more deep, you know. Because The Wall's actually a story, believe it or not. You can, you can listen to it and just be all chill and just be kind of depressed. It's, it's kind of depressing. But, I swear to God, if you're depressed and you listen to it, you'll feel better by the end of the... Uh, by the end of like the whole album, it just has a really good feel, good feeling to it. I, I love the wall so much, viewers. So much got me off a. Of, uh, it helped me with a really hard spot in my life, kind of when I was transitioning from high school to like the real world. Yeah, got really depressed at that point in my life. But then I listened to the wall and I felt a lot better. So I, I think that's why I get really emotional whenever I listen to the wall, or at least the second part. I think that's when it really started, like, kind of relating to my life and stuff. Well, not that I can really relate to the wall because it's a really hard story to kind of be like, that happened to me, man. I mean, you can kind of draw conclusions to it, but <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Anyways. I haven't really talked about this mission at all. I just kind of went off on my own little tangent. Um, car detonation. Easy to explode. 
Um, when you were when you get diffused, you have to repair it. You have to make it look mint. So you know, cutting it. All right, I got fixed. I got it. Well, I got fixed. You gotta get mint. You gotta be careful in the beginning because it can explode very easily. Um, as you can tell, I kind of, I kind of bumped it into the walls while I was trying to get into the garage, and the meter just went up like crazy. So it can be a very frustrating mission, but that's that's about the basics of that mission. You know, not really much to it. Just be careful and smooth driver. I mean, you got a little bit of a time limit, but that's about it. Yeah, not really much to say. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I got a little saliva stuck in my throat. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm going to end it, so I'll see you guys later.